Hello, everyone. This is your host, Andrew Pledger, and today's episode is a bit different. I am sharing an interview I did on the Indoctrination podcast with Rachel Bernstein, and it is my reaction to the election results in real time. And it was a shorter episode. There's probably, there's so much more I could have gotten into, but it was just my reaction that day and some thoughts that I had in my mind. And Rachel being a therapist and cult specialist shares her thoughts and insights also. And I just, I thought it'd be a good episode to release because I know a lot of us are processing different things. And it really helps me that day doing the interview, just get some things off my mind and out of my body. But I hope that it can be somewhat healing for you. But here's the interview. Welcome to Indoctrination, a weekly conversation series about protecting yourself from systems of control. I'm your host, Rachel Bernstein. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning into this special post-election episode. We wanted to show solidarity with survivors of high control groups by discussing some of the common triggers and fears and anxieties that have come along with this year's unprecedented election season. Our hope is that by engaging in conversations like the one we're having today, we can provide some helpful insights as we survey our new political landscape, specifically from a survivor's perspective. Joining me for the conversation today, is our wonderful team member, Andrew Pledger, whose own experience in the independent fundamentalist Baptist movement gives him a unique perspective on the role that Christian fundamentalism plays in our current political climate. Hi, Andrew. Quite a a morning. We're recording this the morning after. The morning after a decision has been made. I think a lot of people were either up all night or went to sleep feeling worried about what they were going to find when they turned on their phone or checked the news and turned on their TV wherever they get their news. And so I'm wondering how it was for you this morning. Yeah, I mean, for me, I was just woke up really just devastated by the results because of course like I was rooting for Harris I voted for Harris and I was also just really disappointed and shocked because the last election it took us a while to know the results but the fact that it was just so clear-cut with all that Trump has done and his behavior his rhetoric that so many people would vote for him I've been in my freeze response today, just between numb, but also like the feelings of devastation, even like feelings of betrayal, grief, of just dread. It's been so overwhelming. Right. And, you know, I I woke up to a lot of comments already on Facebook, on Instagram, a lot of people posting things on TikTok, and people who are texting me, clients who are emailing me, people who have been involved in fundamentalist branches of religion, people who have been involved in cults, people who have dealt with narcissistic abuse. And they're all having a very, very hard time. And I think it feels like you can't trust the leader, like a lot of people have had experiences with, but also you can feel very much alone when you see the numbers coming in and you know, you're wondering, is anyone going to care about me and what I care about? And is anyone going to care about what a leader does? Like, what? where is there a bridge too far? Some people have asked, like, can a leader just do anything they want and still have people follow them? Which is what a lot of former cult members are are thinking about with Trump, some of whom are not even partisan or taking a political role, but just seeing the personality and seeing so many kind of daunting and haunting kinds of similarities. 
Yeah. And I think as someone who grew up in a cult and escaped it three years ago, it just the feelings of just being so trapped and just seeing the MAGA cult, there's just this cult of personality that has grown from Trump. A lot of us cult survivors, we know what it's like in that environment to see America. It's like America is turning to a big cult. Like I saw that somewhere online, people comparing it to that. And those of us who have survived that kind of environment know that in a cult, difference is dangerous. It doesn't allow for difference. There's one way to be, one way to think, one way to act, one way to love, etc. And if you don't match that, you're out. You don't matter. And that has just been one of the things that I've just been thinking about, especially with Project 2025, that the Heritage Foundation wants to push towards the Trump administration to implement that would just strip away human rights in general, LGBTQ rights, women's rights. I mean, it's been in the work for decades. And I heard a lot of its ideals growing up in the IFB. I I remember just sitting in sermons hearing just we we need our kind of Christianity. We need our, our kind of beliefs in the government. I heard that so many times. So for me to then see that to be so concrete and to have lived that and also as a queer person being in that environment, you know, growing up, hearing that LGBTQ people are deserving of death or don't deserve to exist at all. Um, and I know so many other minority groups are so terrified of that. And just, it's, it's, I think of it too, of like, it's like you're going back to an abusive relationship in a sense. That's kind of what it, that's kind of what this, I guess that's a way to put it right now is just being under that absolute control because that's the part of Project 2025. And Trump, you know, he is an authoritarian leader and just feeling out of control of your own life and being subjected to coercive control. The fear of that again is just, it's just so overwhelming. Right. And I think about that, you know, as the, as the mother of trans kids and, you know, <laughs> what's going to be happening there? What kind of rights are they going to be losing? What kind of support? What kind of medical help are they going to be losing? It is also really worrisome for people who are immigrants, people who are going to be potentially dealing with deportation. And I, I wonder also how much of the things that Trump talked about doing when he was going to be president again were a way just to get votes or if he really means it. Because I think he knows how to kind of pander to different populations. He knows how to say kind of the right things, you know, very much like a cult leader saying that they care about you and they care about human rights and or they care about making a difference in the world, but they just really ultimately care about themselves. Uh, I'm wondering how things are going to be, you know, moving forward because he still has sentencing to deal with for all of his felonies. And so, you know, it's, it's not going to be an easy time, I think, overall for him. It's going to be pretty messy. But I wonder about what other similarities you see, because I I'm noticing just having someone who just gets away with things, uh, hopefully not permanently, but gets away with things when everyone else is held to a certain standard that he's not held to. You know, like I think about uh, the rallies with Kamala and with anyone else who spoke or seemed to say something that he didn't like or that his base didn't like, they were given an incredibly hard time about it, but that it seemed like he can sort of say or do whatever he wants and it's somehow all okay. And his followers are still his followers. Like one of the definitions of a cult that the rules only apply to other people, not to the leadership. What else do you find that you're noticing about his control or the manipulation or that he gets away with everything? 
Yeah, I mean, I think especially what has been triggering, I think for me with him being compared to a cult leader, those very authoritarian tendencies that I saw growing up in the IFB. So I think this us versus them mentality that he has really stoked this fear of immigrants, this fear of trans people, this fear of this, fear of that, of this this different boogeyman he has created. And so he stokes this fear and then he gives you the solution for it, which a lot of cult leaders love to do that. So he has said a lot of extreme things. I know the mass deportation thing, that his solution to a problem that he made up or talked about, um, it is it is very scary. And I hope it doesn't happen. I hope he's like these leaders where, you know, they're all talk, but no action <laughs> with that. <laughs> I hope he doesn't do those things. But I think another thing with that kind of like charismatic relationship he has with his followers where he has the answer. He knows more than you and only he can save you. He Only he can save the American people. That's what he has portrayed himself as. And that's what I saw a lot growing up. These IFB leaders claiming to have this special spiritual knowledge or having the answers or being more spiritually mature and you just need to follow and trust them because they're led by God or they have this. And, you know, I think what just his slogan, make America great again, I think that resonates with a lot of fundamentalists because they're all about preserving the past of like what they see as good. I remember hearing a lot in the IFB, like, got to keep that old time religion. (laughs) Um, I heard that so much of just this clinging to this past that they want. But it looks very well for like, white straight men. (laughs) But for everyone else, (laughs) it doesn't look so good. And with fundamentalists, it was a reaction to modernism. So they they hate all this change that has happened in modern society, women's rights, LGBTQ rights, science progressing. And so they align with that make America great again, because that means going back. And for them, going back is good. And that is very, very scary. And those are just a few similarities that I've seen. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, I'm also finding that with leaders like him, it's very hard to know how they really feel about issues or if they are just saying what they need to say. And one of the things that is clearer, at least it seems so, and maybe it's naive of me to think that, but just that with Kamala Harris, I felt like I could tell what mattered to her, albeit still that she's a politician, but that her messages remain pretty static about what she cared about. And I feel like with like with cult leaders, you don't really ever know them. They have this, I think, false persona, sometimes where they they take a very hard line about issues and it's to cover up the fact that, you know, they actually really, you know, have the opposite view or engage are engaging in a life where they're participating in something that then they are demonizing from the pulpit and just the slipperiness of that and feeling like you're on sort of shaky ground, like not knowing if what you're being told is the truth. Do you get the same feeling here? Yeah, I think that's very much a lot of that projection. I think that's happened. And especially with cult leaders with scandals, they'll accuse people of all these other things that they are doing. And then, you know, later on the pastor, you know, did this crime or, you know, sexually abused this person or this happened. But yeah, I I would say I would agree with that. Mm, Okay. I think it's also good for us to talk about what to do. I mean, you know, there's the whole self-care part of this. And I've seen also a lot of people saying online and in other places, I feel like I need to do something. I feel like I need to be among my people. I feel like I need to still know that there are going to be grassroots efforts. 
to keep things going with people who really care about the social issues that I care about. And so I wonder in the past for you, when you were, you know, at Bob Jones and other places, what did you do for self-care? How did you survive it and emotionally, even physically? Like, did you need, you know, you were like watched like a hawk. And so I don't know what you, what you were able to do that maybe you, you're able to do some of that now. Yeah. I think for me, especially when I was at Bob Jones growing up or being in that very like high control surveillance culture, I mean, I would go off and do things a lot by myself just to feel at peace. But for a while, you know, you can't be alone all the time. You need genuine community, genuine connection where you are seen, heard and understood and where you can be yourself. But you can never be that in a cult. You have to be exactly what they want. And it just gets rid of your individuality. And it's just such a burden to carry. And it's so just suffocating to yourself and your spirit. And so for me, when I was at Bob Jones, what was life saving for me was seeking community outside of that world. And really, that's how I got out. Um, If I would have never found that I don't think I would have gotten out, I probably would have taken my own life in that environment. But finding that community, like genuine, and people say community all the time. And community, again, it's not just being in a group of people. You know, it's easy to say community when you're a group, but it's where you are cared and loved for who you are, and you can be who you are. And that's a big difference. And so that is something, especially that has been difficult for me since I've left, but I'm especially starting to do this year. It's very hard being vulnerable with people when you've been taught to be perfect your entire life and to like put on this front. (laughs) But for me, you know, I've become a little bit involved with the local PFLAG group for LGBTQ people and even joining um, a mental health support group through NAMI, which is National Alliance on Mental Illness to get that help. And to just, there, there are other people out there and to know that you're not alone. And it feels so hopeless right now you feel like I mean I feel like my power has been taken away or so many other people's power is taken away too so I think right now the only thing that we can do is come together right now and really because I I, I mean I'm hesitant to say fight (laughs) because growing up it was all about fight 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 I think that's something else that Trump has honed into but I think there is a way to go about it where we can come together and move forward and move America forward. Mm. I love that notion. And yeah, you know, the the whole idea of fighting. I mean, I think people do feel that they are now embroiled in a fight. They're uh, in a fight to preserve their rights, preserve the rights of the people they love. And it, it will take really kind of feeling like you have to just keep pushing a boulder uphill, but maybe to with with some success. I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens over this stretch of time and what gets mobilized and who gets mobilized in actually a very empowered way. Like, I think when you realize that you're up against a system that you think you might not be able to trust or that operates in a cult-like way, you find your way to have a voice if you can, have power if you can, take care of yourself, go for walks, do, do the things that you need to do. And it's really important that people take care of themselves, especially when they're getting so triggered and when they're feeling, you know, so fearful. You know, people who have been writing to me who were in Bible-based groups, people also who were in kind of large group awareness trainings where one of them actually talked to me about going to a Trump rally, being a Trump fan, but then finding that it was very much like being at one of these large group awareness trainings. Someone else likened it to having been at a rally for David Miscavige in Scientology, that you're just having this energy stoked within you, but to the point of it almost bringing out the worst in you, that you just start yelling things that you might not believe in, that you are ready to take on the fight of the leader in kind of a torch and pitchfork way 
And I think some people then realize how easy it is for people to get caught up in things and they they don't like even seeing it in themselves. And so it's going to be important for people to hold on to who they are, no matter what, no matter who the leadership is, no matter also the fear mongering. And I wanted to talk to you about that, that, you know, how much you think fear mongering is a part of cultic systems and also what you've seen now with the whole Trump campaign and Trump base. Yeah, I mean, the fear mongering that is such a part of just cultic groups and like the cultic mindset. And that was a big part of growing up in the IFB was just they scare you and scare you so much that you're going to have to do this thing. You're going to believe this way or something horrible is going to happen. And I think that has been something that Trump has definitely done. Like if he if he is not elected, America is doomed. This apocalyptic type narrative that has just been painted and portrayed with Trump and especially with QAnon and like that whole all the conspiracies that has propped that up. There are all these and again, like you've talked about how like it helps people have a sense of control. All these different conspiratorial beliefs. And yes, there's all these fears, but again, he's giving them the solution. And with the fear mongering, like it just shuts down your critical thinking. You're just in this fight or flight mode. And it has been so triggering for me at times to even hear it because I can feel, even though like I don't logically believe those things, like my nervous system will go into that fight of like, yes, we have to fight, we have to do this. Like blah blah. But then I'm like, wait, like why am I feeling that even though I don't it's just such a cognitive dissonance thing. And I'm thankful I'm self-aware enough to like stop that and not join MAGA. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like not like follow that. Because I've sadly seen people online that I thought you know, have recovered enough or had deconstructed enough to not fall back into that kind of thinking, but then jump right back into it. It's, it's so it can be so appealing, especially as you know, Rachel, in these times of uncertainty, uh, it's easy to stoke those fears and provide those solutions. And you know, I don't think that every single person who voted for Trump is a horrible person. I think there are some that are. <laughs> but I think a lot of people have been misled and they've been taken advantage of and their fears have been stoked so much. Part of it too, it's so much in like the religious right. It's just, he, Trump is a perfect leader for them because he does emulate that fear, that doom. And I think sadly, so many people have bought into that. Right. And I, and I think also, you know, about the narcissistic personality and the smugness that goes along with it, the air of entitlement that goes along with it, but also the need to bring down your enemies, that you are so easily injured, your ego is so easily bruised, and you want to get people back. You know, when I heard my mom, who's lived through a lot of presidential elections, um, say to me that, because she's a Democrat, and she said, I'm really worried about Trump winning, but I'm equally worried about Trump losing. And we're at that place in our country where we have to worry, similar to people she knows who were raised in dictatorships. You know, what happens if the person in charge has their feelings hurt and who they're going to try to get to do their dirty work for them because they usually don't get their hands dirty, but how they're going to cultivate the kind of this groundswell uh, and momentum in their base to want to get people back and fight their fights. And so it's going to be really important, I think, with all of this happening and sort the us versus them mentality, all the culty stuff that we're going to be seeing to be able to really stay centered, to be able to know, okay, this is who I am. I'm not going to let myself be drawn into being, let's say, a militant person if that's not who I am, or to, you know, just want revenge if that's not who I am. How do I stay focused on kind of being my best self, but taking care of myself, but doing exactly as you're saying, to not be alone, not be isolated, 
and connect with others. I think right now there are going to be many people looking for that kind of connection. And I'm wondering when you were needing to reach out and you were saying you got involved in some of these organizations, how else did you reach out to people? What did you do to find community? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, it definitely started online, just sharing my experiences and even going on podcasts. And I have been thinking back to the episode I did with you when I first came on the show several years ago. It's just so hard as a cult survivor to go into these communities also because you feel so strange, so out of place, so behind on so many things too, so kind of alien. And so I think that's something that I have definitely struggled with and still like working through that like everyone else, I see this in air quotes, like seems normal um, and that like, you feel so abnormal. Um, but I think spaces that foster vulnerability, I think have been very helpful for me. So like, I think I'd mentioned going to NAMI, that's been great. And I have my own Facebook group for my podcast. And there are so many different Facebook groups for survivors. Like I, I highly recommend to people starting out there. There's so many different cultic groups or high control groups that the survivors get together online and connect. And I think that can be such a healing thing for people. And it has been for me. Yeah. And I think being able to do it sooner than later to really, you know, even take this week to cultivate that those kinds of connections to not feel alone. And to also hope that a lot of people are going to get mobilized to want to make a difference, want to preserve people's rights, want to do what they can. Because that's what happens when, you know, you have someone in charge who you feel is working against your efforts. And it does create organizations and people who really get fired up, I think, to want to be the protectors of others. You know, and so it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out. I'm wondering just, you know, I know we're having a bit of a shorter episode today and there won't be a an outro, a one more thing before you go, because it feels like this whole conversation is a one more thing before you go. Like, what what do we need to talk about and what can we learn from this? But I wonder also just about what we can learn from this. What do you think this means about our country? and I mean, I know that's a big, that's a big question and it's not going to be an answer that's going to be true for everyone, but that a majority of people were either able to be swayed in a certain way or, mm, or it was the fear mongering or people were searching for something, or I'm even wondering how many people were just not ready to have a woman president. And so it wasn't that they liked Trump so much. They just didn't, they were either misogynistic or fearful about having a woman in charge. What are some of your takeaways? What do you think this means? What can we learn about how this was able to happen? What do you think? Number one, I would say the first thing I would say, like the education system, I think in general has failed America because I think we people should have been able to, I think, see, to see the parallels to past dictators should be able to see that. And I know when you're in the cultic mindset, it's hard to see that. I think it shows the downside to our indiv very indi hyper individualist culture. I think that's one of the reasons a lot of this has come about to focus on me, 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 all that I can get. And when we focus on that, and I think that can also have an us versus them mentality. Oh, we have that competitive nature that we have to beat them. We have to. And so I think that has made us forget that we're all human. And I think that's another aspect of that. I, I mean, I think something else we we can learn from this is I think no one is immune from a cultic mindset. And I think cult education, which I know, like, I'm so thankful for your podcast, like mass cult education needs to happen. I think that is so, so important. And I know that's, I don't know when, that, when or if that will happen. But I think another thing, to learn from this, I think people got way too comfortable. We got way too comfortable and thought, oh, we're progressing forward or oh, we'll never go back. And it caught a lot of people off guard. We took a lot of things for granted. 
I think a lot of people got too comfortable. I think that's something else we learned. And I think regarding a point related to that too is, you know, a supremacy mindset is so ingrained in our culture still. I know a lot of people like to think that we've let go of supremacist thinking in our past that, oh, America isn't racist anymore. Oh, we have all these rights. But I think Trump really brought out in a lot of his followers and showed America that a lot of this bigoted thinking is not gone. And I think, again, in order to really, I think, get rid of that is, again, it it goes back to connection, community. As long as we interact with people who are just like us, we will be in the same mindset. We will keep our same beliefs. But once we meet someone who is different or meet diverse people, I think that's when a lot of these extremist mindsets, these caricatures that people conjure up in their mind, I think that's when we can really let that go. And we've become such a divided country, but I hope we can get to a point where we can see the humanity in one another and not dehumanize each other. I hope that made sense. But Oh my goodness. Yes. No, it was fantastic and so important. It was an amazing list. Uh, And so, you know, I, I feel like there's nothing to add to that. That is beautifully said. And I think just for the people listening, you know, if if you were happy with the way the election went, great. Uh, if you were happy with the way the election went, but still are worried about Trump's personality and what you see and how much dissension he stoked last time and violence, then it is good to keep tabs on that and to do what you can to try to affect some sort of change or try to keep yourself in this reasonable state and the people around you in a reasonable state, not getting caught up in that. And if you're unhappy with the results, you know, I think it's going to be a hard time. It's going to be a hard time for a lot of people who are very worried. And so I think your words are really important here about how to find community, how to find kind of a certain sense of, well, to pierce kind of a, a sense of isolation. And I think being able to really take care of yourself, it's a hard thing when people have left cultic groups too, because they often have the word selfish uh, that replaces self-care. And it's not selfish to take care of the self. In fact, that's part of your responsibility. So thank you so much, Andrew. I wish us all good luck with this. And I'm, I'm hoping for civility. I'm hoping for sanity. But either way, we, we have each other and those listening, you know, we are all in support of each other and each other's healing and the amount of this that's going to be triggering. You're certainly not alone. And uh, it's well understood, at least by us, uh, that this is going to be a hard time for a lot of people. So thank you so much, Andrew, for coming on today to help to help us all kind of think this through, talk this through and feel supported. Yeah, thank you for having on having me on. And thank you so much for all the work that you do in this field, too. You've helped so many survivors, including me. Oh, that's sweet of you to say. And you too, with all of your work. Thanks. Okay. All right. Good luck to all of us. Thank you very much for listening. Please support Indoctrination on Patreon at patreon.com slash indoctrination. Be sure to give us a follow on our social media. Find us on Facebook and Instagram using at Indoctrination Podcast. And for Twitter, find us at at underscore indoctrination we love hearing from you too so send us an email at indoctrination show at gmail.com and for more updates on the show visit our website at www.podpage.com forward slash indoctrination <laughs>